What's up guys, welcome back. Today we have another delicious recipe on the menu. I'll be showing you how to make this creamy chipotle chicken pasta. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right guys, meet me in the kitchen. Let's make it happen. First things first, we're gonna get started on some roasted garlic. For that, you're gonna need one head of garlic that we're gonna slice down the middle like you see me doing right here. You wanna peel some of the skin off, go ahead and preheat the oven to 400 degrees. This garlic's gonna go into that oven at 400 for about 40 minutes, but not before we wrap it nice and tight in some aluminum foil with a little olive oil and some salt and pepper or my all-purpose seasoning, which is a blend of salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. You wanna wrap it nice and tight like we're about to do those Christmas presents here in a couple weeks. And then again, it's going into that 400 degree oven for exactly 40 minutes. You'll have the most perfect roasted garlic you've ever tasted. And you can do it in bulk and just keep it in the fridge for a couple weeks. Now that we got our roasted garlic in the oven, we're gonna go ahead and start prepping our veggies. Here I have one red and one green bell pepper that I'm just gonna dice up into bite-sized pieces. I like to use one of each color, mostly for presentation purposes, guys. So if you have a preference, use whichever one you want. We're also gonna add an onion to the mix here in a second. Feel free to add whatever vegetables you like to this recipe. You could add some asparagus, some spinach, some sun-dried tomatoes, anything like that will work just fine. And now that we have our peppers prepped, it's time to move on to the onion. All the specific measurements and ingredients are provided in the description box below. Now that we have our veggies prepped, it's time to get into the protein. Today we're using some chicken breasts. You could use salmon for this recipe too. We're just gonna season them up with my all-purpose seasoning, which is a blend of salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. If you haven't tried that yet, you can get yours via the link in my description box. And my new baby, which is the hot version of my all-purpose seasoning. It has a little jalapeno, it has a little cayenne pepper. It's not too spicy, it's just right in my opinion. Both of these seasonings are low sodium, so you see me going on here a little thick. That's because there's not a whole lot of salt in these seasonings, so you can be a little bit more heavy handed. But as always, feel free to use whatever seasoning you like on your chicken. And now that our water's up to a boil, we're gonna add a little bit of salt, and then we're gonna add our pasta noodles to that boiling water and cook the pasta per package instructions. This pasta is called Maffoldini, and I got it from Wegmans, but you can use whatever heavy pasta you like. Penne would work here as well. While we wait for our pasta to cook, it's time to cook this chicken. So we're gonna heat our skillet over medium high, add a little avocado oil, and then gently place the chicken breast into the skillet away from you to avoid any splatter. Then you wanna press down with your hand to get maximum surface area contact so you can get a beautiful color on your chicken breast like so. Take a second to admire your work and then flip the chicken, probably about two to three minutes per side. Then we're gonna pop it in a 400 degree oven, but not before we baste it in two tablespoons of butter, cause why the hell not? We're pulling out all the stops for this pasta today. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you've ever tried this pasta before. They got something like it at Cheesecake Factory, but this is way better in my opinion. Oh man, couple money shots early on. Little food porn action for you guys. So after you've basted until your heart is content, we're gonna pop that in the oven at 400 degrees for about eight to 10 minutes or until the chicken breast registers 165 degrees internal temperature. And while we wait for that chicken to finish cooking, we're gonna get started on our sauce. So into a skillet over medium heat, we're gonna add two tablespoons of butter, a splash of avocado oil, and then we're gonna add in those veggies, which includes the peppers and the onions. Again, I have one red and one green bell pepper, but you can use either or. Once we saute those down, they start to get tender. We're gonna hit them with a little seasoning, a little salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. I'm gonna add a little bit of heat to the party as well because this is a chipotle pasta and it should have a little bit of heat to it. So we're working over medium heat. We're just waiting for these veggies to get nice and tender. Now we're gonna add in our roasted garlic. You can add a few cloves of this. Once it roasts, it becomes nice and sweet and really soft, so you can just mash it with the back of your spatula like you see me doing right here, and it'll just dissolve into the sauce. So once you've worked in the garlic into the rest of the veggies, we're gonna add in our heavy cream, two cups to be exact. You may need to go with two and a half cups depending on the consistency that you want. We're also gonna use a little bit of pasta water later to thin this out if it gets too thick. But again, all the specific measurements and ingredients are provided for you in the description box below, so don't forget to check that out. We're gonna increase the heat here up to medium high. We're gonna bring this up to a simmer. So just get in there with your spatula, make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom or to the sides. Things will start thickening up here in just a second once you bring it to a rolling simmer. Your house is gonna be smelling absolutely amazing. This sauce is packed with flavor. And now that the foundation of our sauce is set, we're gonna take things to yet another level by adding in one can of chipotles and adobo. Just a sauce though, guys, we're gonna leave the peppers alone. Unless of course you want this pasta to be extra spicy and hey, it's your kitchen, what the hell, do your thing. 
So just get in there with your spatula, mix everything around. Then we're gonna decrease the temperature down to low so we can add in our cheese. You never wanna add cheese to a sauce that's piping hot because it'll separate. And we want a nice smooth sauce. So we're gonna add in some Parmesan cheese. I have some shredded and some grated. We're just gonna mix that in until the cheese melts beautifully. You wanna taste as you go and adjust the flavor to your preference as always. If it ever gets too spicy, you could add a little bit more cream to balance it out. And of course, if it's not spicy enough, you could add in some of those chipotle peppers or just hit it with some cayenne or red pepper flakes. The key here is just to balance the flavor to your personal preference. You also wanna stop cooking your pasta about one to two minutes right before it's finished because we're gonna finish cooking it in the sauce. And we're also gonna add about a quarter cup of the pasta water, so make sure you reserve that. Next, we're going in with some of that grated Parmesan cheese. We want this nice and creamy and cheesy, super delicious pasta. This whole thing comes together in less than 45 minutes, guys. You can have this on the dinner table for a weeknight meal. So at this point, the pasta is just about done. It's important to go ahead and give it one last taste test to make sure the flavor is right where you want it if not you can adjust the seasoning so that's what i'm doing right here just adding a little bit more of the hot ap seasoning just to kick up the heat a little bit we're going to mix that in guys please take a quick second to share this video on your social media i'm trying really hard to hit 300,000 subscribers by the end of the year and we got a good ways to go but i think we can still pull it off but i can't do it without you guys' help so i appreciate the support here we're going in with some fresh chopped parsley for a pop of color, a little red pepper flakes, because why the hell not? We're gonna give that a mix and then we're gonna plate this up. We gotta slice up our chicken first though. So after your chicken has rested for about five to six minutes, we're gonna slice the chicken on a bias for presentation purposes. As you can see, it's still nice and hot, super juicy and delicious. I can't wait for you guys to try this recipe. Oh man, look at that chicken. Let me know in the comments what recipe you want to see for New Year's Eve or what your family traditionally eats on New Year's Eve. I really hope you guys are having a safe and happy holiday season with your loved ones. We're going to go ahead and plate this chicken breast right on top of the pasta. Going to get you guys a trademark money shot and a taste test. I saved a little sauce for a little sauce pour action. Oh man, say it with me guys, looking good. Going down with a little grated Parmesan cheese and of course some fresh chopped parsley for a pop of color. Brace yourself for a trademark money shot. The only thing left to do, my friends, is get in there with a fork and give this a taste test. You'll notice that I have a little bit of a disappointed look on my face at the end of this and that is because your boy is on a diet. This pasta was fantastic, but I cannot eat it. But I can have some chicken, so there we go. A little bit more chicken. Gotta drop some of this holiday weight. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Give your boy a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and the bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.